Welcome back. It's the morning after the night before, and boy did we celebrate our victory over reigning champions AEK. Perhaps a little too much. Pedrora, Constantelios and Merg have all succumbed to injuries. Kedrora's might be legit. He'll be out for a while with sprained knee ligaments, leaving us a little thin in defensive areas. To address this, we've signed a striker. Kirill Despidov looks to be a quality acquisition, a winger with genuine pace, who will probably utilise as an advanced forward. Zhivkovic has also signed a new contract, which means we might have a chance of keeping him until at least the end of the season. Trouble, of course, is always around the corner. Brandon Thomas has dropped down the pecking order and been left out of the Conference League squad, which he's not too happy about. A mutiny is surely guaranteed. Or not. The squad cares so little, not a single player has an opinion on the matter. Back to the matches, and I think it's about time for a montage. I do love a montage. It's a great way to sneak in disappointing results without people noticing. Or it would be if I didn't then bring it up immediately after. We dropped our first points of the season in Crete, which is less than ideal preparation for our upcoming game against Olympiakos. Swalho Maite's broken ankle on his full debut wasn't ideal either, and we'll be terminating his loan at the earliest opportunity in January. Tyson joins him on the physio's table, albeit thankfully a much less serious injury. Now every good story needs a villain. It's too early in the career to know who that is just yet, but Evangelos Malinarkos certainly fits the bill. The Olympiakos owner is a controversial character and is also president of the Greek Super League. Of course, I'm sure he wouldn't do anything untoward with such power. Nonetheless, it's something to be mindful of ahead of our upcoming game. With Iron Mike out, we've switched to our Moissanite tactic, so we can get both Konstantelios and Shivkovic on the pitch at the same time, and hopefully get more control of central areas out of possession. This is our biggest test yet. Last time I said that, we ran out comfortable winners at AEK, so I hope this gives us some kind of luck. Realistically, it's going to be tough, but at least we are familiar with facing a 4-2-3-1 which is a polite way of saying I'm bored with facing a 4-2-3-1. You might be wondering what asinine story I've chosen to talk about today. Maybe it's an exploration of Charles Reap, the man considered to be the first football analyst and how that influences our attempts to get down the channels. Or maybe Gecko George, a waiter I met briefly in 2008 with very sticky hands. Sadly, it's neither. I'm just going to concentrate on the game. Shocker, I know. I feel like we've started well. Until now! <laughs> Good save from Katarski. I don't like how we're letting him drive forward like that. Another chance. Oof, another good save.
Hmm. These long highlights give me anxiety. Feels like we're just waiting for the mistake that they spring a counter from. Oz to Ev now. And cue the graphic. Cancel the graphic. Offside. Oh boy, that was close. Okay, feels like they're getting a bit of joy down the left. Yep, we need to do something about Masoras. Maybe hemorrhoid cream will help. We're in a good position here. Uh, doesn't cross. And that was never going to trouble, was it? Oh, that's not too bad. We're controlling the ball even if we're not creating enough chances. Oh, Baba has space to run to here. And that's a goal! Cue the graphic! That's where we do well. Baba is great when he has grass in front of him. His decision making frustrates me to no end, but good ball in. Despotov doesn't even need to jump. Oh, Loratza seems confused. That's another chance. Good save. Right. Loratza's number is up. <laughs> Good to see us playing out of defence and through the press there. Oh, no. Is that about to be a second yet? Oh, even worse. Lovely goal from Ebora. Although another long-range effort conceded. I thought the highlight was going to be a foul there by Mikolidis. Runs through to Ebora. And to be fair to Kataski, not much he could do there. Well, here we go. Play it. Play it. Play it. Don't don't play it now. Offside. And not Despidov's fault. Now here they come. Well done, Bubba. Not so well done, Bubba. Are we going to close him down? No. <laughs> right, last few minutes. Oh, that's a lovely ball. But Kataski stands tall. Hero. Okay, I'll take that. We were second best, but this is a difficult place to come. It's good to know that we can dominate possession against better teams than us. We just need to look at improving our chance creation. In fact, that's pretty much what we need to say to the lads. We didn't play our best, but I'm happy with the result. Whilst momentum might have stalled a little the last couple of weeks, we've got to be pleased with our start to the campaign. We're still unbeaten after the first quarter of the first phase of the league although Ultrometers can take the top spot if they win their game in hand. I should probably explain that first phase bit. The Greek Super League is split into two phases. The first phase, all 14 teams play each other twice, like a normal league. Then someone comes along with scissors and cuts it not quite in half. The top six are put in the championship group, bottom eight into the relegation group. All stats and points are carried forward. Each team then plays the other teams in their respective group a further two times. Once all is done, the top four secure European football for the following season, and the bottom two are banished to the darkest depths of the Greek second division. All that to say, if we are going to win the league, we're going to have to up our game against the likes of Olympiakos and Panathinaikos, who, somewhat appropriately, we will play in our next league game. That will be our fourth game in a nasty stretch of five away games in all competitions. I'm not suggesting a conspiracy, but just to remind you who the president of the league is. Before I go, I want to take a moment to talk about Baba Rahman. He was one of the pre-arranged transfers, and honestly, one I was not too happy with. 
His substandard passing and decision making meant I expected him to be on the peripheries of the squad. Now we have played enough games though, we can take a closer look at performance. 8 goal contributions in 725 minutes is rather impressive, and his 0.43 XA puts him in the 99th percentile compared to wingers. He is however, as expected, careless with the ball. He loses possession 18 times a game, and his 82% pass completion is not good. It's a genuine dilemma, because the headline numbers are great, but there are real concerns with the underlying play. It's only October, and we don't know what our transfer budget will be, if any, once January comes around. Nonetheless, we need to start planning soon, but I'll leave that for the next episode. See you then.